Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and this is Demos with Angular. Today we're talking about routing. Routing is the process where we take what the user enters in the URL browser, and then we interpret that and turn that into the state of an Angular application, such as which component we're loading or which parameters we're passing into a component. We're going to take a sample CLI project and implement routing in the base module or the root module of our application. And then we're going to go ahead and create a couple child modules that we're going to lazy load into our app via the router. Let's get started. So if we take a look, what we've got here is a standard CLI application. So if we go into source app, we're going to see all the normal things. And we're going to dive right into our app module. So this is a stock out of the box app module. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and import the routing module from at Angular slash router. Then we're going to go ahead and use that router module to set up uh, a little bit of our root level routing. We're going to use for root, which is the command that allows us to specify global uh, application level routes. And what we're going to do is we're just going to leave it as an empty array here. And now we actually want to create something that we can route to. And so to do that, we're going to create two lazy loaded modules using the CLI's generation commands, the scaffolding commands that allow us to um, quickly create things like modules and components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use ngg module. And I'm going to create something called a home module. And then let's go ahead and do something very similar and create an about module. And then within each of these modules, I'm going to want to create a component that we can actually route to, something that we can visually load onto the screen. The module just supplies the context, but the component is what we actually want to be rendering and loading into the window. So let's dive into source app home, and we're going to generate a component. And we're just going to call the component home. And because of where I am in the CLI, in my command line here, it's going to generate and attach that component into the right module. So you see it created the component and then updated the appropriate module automatically. We'll do the same thing with about. All right, so now we have these two places that we can route to. Let's go ahead and get started with a little bit of routing. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create two paths. The first path is going to be for an empty path. So that's it when someone visits the home page of my application. And then I'm going to create an about path for when a user wants to know more about what's going on. So we're going to say path empty, and then we're going to say load children. And what load children does is this allows us to asynchronously load additional modules into the application. So we're going to use a string here instead of doing an import because we don't want to actually resolve this at build time. We want to resolve this at runtime. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a path directly to the lazy loaded module. So here I'm going to say dot slash home slash home dot module. And then within that file, I'm going to specify the specific uh, application object that I want to be loading, which is going to be home module here. And you can see that should match up into our home module, the name of this object. I will also notice that there's a little bit of a hiccup on the CLI with the path resolution. This should just be dot slash home. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing in our about module here. Fix up the path. And then in my app module, let's go ahead and add that second remote. So I'm going to say path about this time. We're going to lazy load this. So we're going to create a boundary within our application that only gets resolved once a user tries to activate that route. And so we've now told my application what to do when a user navigates to that route in terms of which module to load, but those modules don't necessarily know which component to load. So now we want to dive into each of those components uh, and then add a routing module that allows us to resolve from that module into a single component. And we'll do this just by uh, matching the empty path because we've already looked at that uh, base path as part of our root routing. So I'm going to import router module again from that angular slash router. Let's just copy this because we'll need it again. And then I'm going to say router module dot for child because now we're not specifying root level routes. We're specifying child routes that are going to be lazy loaded. And I'm just going to need one path here. So I'm going to say path blank. It's going to resolve synchronously to a component known as home component. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing in our about module. So we're going to import, uh, do the ES2015 import. Now we're going to pull the router into our ng module and configure it. So we're going to say router module dot for child. We're going to pass it an array of routes. Again, this route is just going to be empty string because we've already looked at the about path and we only load this module when we're there. Uh, and then I'm going to synchronously resolve to the about component. 
Now that we've specified our routes, we actually need to tell the application when and where to load the specific routes. So the way we do this is we're going to take a look at the HTML of our app component. And I'm just going to delete all of this stock content there, and I'm going to create what's called a router outlet. This router outlet tells my application where I should be loading each of the routes. Uh, they don't actually get loaded inside of the router outlet, they get loaded as siblings. Uh, this is important when we get to things like animations because we're actually going to want multiple routes to be instantiated at the same time. But if we take a look at our application now that we have a router outlet, we should start seeing the application being able to understand the path that the user has entered into their URL bar and then rendering that to the screen. So if we look at the default route on localhost 4200, we see home works. And now if I type in slash about, we're seeing about works. So we, we actually now have a fully lazy loaded application that's navigating to two routes. Now let's go ahead and use one more feature of the router, which is the ability to uh, specify where you want the application to go. So I'm going to create a little nav bar here. So in our nav bar, I'm going to create two links. So I'm going to say a router link. The first router, li router link is going to take us home, or it's going to take us back to the root path. And then the second router link is going to take us into our about. And so what this should enable us to do is do routing within the application without having to adjust the URL bar manually. So this is how you're normally going to be doing things. So again, if we take a look at our application, we now have our little navigation bar at the top. And really importantly, if I pull up the network tab, when I click on a different route than the one I'm on, what we should see is that now we actually have to download an additional file in order to retrieve that. So let's record this. I'm going to clear everything. So when we click to about, we're going to see, hey, I just loaded an additional chunk. Uh, and this is the, all the lazy load code necessary to load that separate module, that about module, all of its dependencies, all of its components, and then we're rendering that to the screen automatically. Hopefully this has gotten you started a little bit with routing in Angular. There's lots of more powerful things you can do, but I'm going to save those for another video. Thanks.